Yes, sister. Uh, good morning, Dr. Zake. I'm Tang Wai Yi, uh, from third year from Biology Marine. I have a question. Uh, I think I hope you can answer it. I'm first of all, I would like to uh, clarify that I'm not here to challenge anyone because uh, this is a question I been asking since I was a child. I've been always, I'm, I always have faith in God and I believe in God. But as a child, I always ask, how does this even begin? I mean, how do we you know, uh, begin to believe in God? Like, the, who's the first one to like, know the existence of God? And then, nowadays we can see that, especially the younger generation is uh, losing faith in God, and I would like to know why. Uh, so basically, that's my question. Thank you. Sister, which background do you come from? Are you a Christian or a...? I'm a Buddhist, actually. You're a Buddhist. Sister asked a question that who was the first person who came to know the existence of God? And today, youngsters are losing faith in God. The first one who came to the existence of God is God himself. He's the first. He's the last. And... He is uncreated. He created many things, amongst which are the human beings. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Dariyat, chapter 51, verse number 56, that we have created the men and the jinn, not but to worship him. So we are here in this world to worship our great almighty God. And this life sister, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, Chapter number 67, verse number 2. It is he who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. This life that we are leading in this world, sister, is a test for the hereafter. It's a test for the hereafter. Like how you appear for an examination. In the examination, you follow the rules and regulation. And if you score, minimum marks is there for passing. If you score the passing mark, then you pass the test. Otherwise, you fail the test. So similarly, in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, is the creator of all this creation, including the human beings who are one of the best of his creation. And the rules and regulation of this examination is being given in the Quran. This Quran is a textbook. It is the constitution. And if you follow the commandments of Almighty God given in this Quran, which is the last and final revelation, you pass the test. Regarding the existence of God, tomorrow I'm going to give a lecture on does God exist? It's a lecture of about one and a half to two hours. I don't intend giving it here. If you have the time, I would invite you to that lecture. Does God exist? And there have proof to the people scientifically, logically, and convince them the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. Now coming to your second part of the question, that why are today youngsters losing faith in God? I do agree with you that there are many youngsters losing faith in God, but many youngsters are coming closer to Almighty God also. The reason is, sister, the gods that people worship around us, you know, in some religion they say, one God is fighting with the other God. One God is defeating the other God. One God's wife is taken away. One God is tortured. A God that can die. So, a logical person starts thinking, what type of God is this? A God which can be defeated by someone else. A God which can die. A God which requires to eat. So, when you start looking at the gods that people are worshipping around you, you disagree with it what is the use in worshipping a dog a god which is not powerful a god which can be hurt a god which can be tortured a god which requires to eat a god which requires to sleep a god which requires food and in the earlier talk my son Farik he gave a few concepts of anthropomorphism etc 
trying to prove <coughs> that Islam is against such qualities of God. In Islam, as my son said, the definition of God is give, given in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul ho Allah ahad, says Allah wa nundi. Allah hu samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yiriz wa lam yulad, the begets not nor is the begotten, wa lam yakul lahu kuffana, there is nothing like him. This is the four line definition of Almighty God given in the Quran. If anyone claims that so and so entity is God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection accepting him to be God. So, because of the wrong concept of God in different religions, they are not agreeing with this God. And even I don't agree with a God which can be defeated, a God which can be hurt, a God which can die. But if you know the correct concept of Almighty God, the all-powerful, who's one, who's absolute and eternal, who begets not noise begotten, and there's nothing like him, you will start having faith in this God. So I do agree with you that many of the logical people with the concept of God that is floating in the world today, in most of the religion, a normal logical human being will not believe in such a God which has human qualities. But if you know the true concept of God, which was explained partly by my son and religion in the right perspective, you will start having more faith in God. So that's the reason knowing the correct concept of God is very important, sister. And once you know the correct concept of God, you will come closer to this creator, your creator, your sustainer, your cherisher, which in Arabic we call as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you, doctor.